When I bought the house, it was a steal, an old Victorian with history, character, and more rooms than I knew what to do with. It had been empty for years, the kind of place that sits on the market, slowly decaying until someone finally sees its potential. That someone was me. I wasn't deterred by the fact that it needed work. The bones were solid, and I had always dreamed of restoring a place like this. The creaking floors, the high ceilings, the original moldings, it all felt like something out of a novel. It was perfect. Well, almost. There was one thing I didn't understand when I first moved in. The door at the end of the upstairs hallway. It was a simple wooden door, painted the same faded white as the others, but unlike the others, it was locked. And not just locked, it was bolted. Rusted padlocks and a heavy iron bar sealed it shut, as if someone had gone to great lengths to ensure no one could get inside. There was no key, and none of the paperwork from the sale mentioned anything about what was behind it. At first, I wasn't too concerned. The house had been through multiple owners over the decades, and I figured maybe someone had simply used it for storage. Maybe it was a safety precaution, or maybe there was nothing behind it at all. I was more focused on the renovations, fixing the plumbing, repainting the walls, replacing broken windows. The locked door could wait. But as the weeks went by, I found myself thinking about it more and more. I would pass it every day on my way to the bedroom, catching myself staring at the rusted locks, wondering what could possibly be behind it. Why go through so much effort to seal off a single room? What were they trying to keep out? Or keep in? Eventually, my curiosity got the better of me. One afternoon, I decided to take a closer look. I grabbed a flashlight and crouched down to examine the locks. They were old, decades old, the kind you don't see anymore. The iron bar that stretched across the door was thick, with heavy bolts anchoring it into frame. Whoever had done this hadn't been messing around. I tried the doorknob, but it didn't budge. The whole thing felt cold to the touch, like it hadn't been opened in years, maybe longer. I knew I should have let it go. There were a hundred other projects waiting for me around the house, and this door could easily stay locked forever without causing any issues. But it was the mystery of it that gnawed at me, the not knowing. So I made a decision. I was going to open it. It took some time but eventually tracked down a locksmith willing to come out to the house. He was an older guy, the kind that had been doing this kind of work for years. When I showed him the door, he raised an eyebrow. Bit overkill, don't you think? He muttered, running his hand over the rusted locks. Yeah, I said, feeling a little embarrassed now. I just want to know what's behind it. The locksmith shrugged, and after about 30 minutes of cutting, prying, and removing the old hardware, the locks were off, the iron bar creaked as he looked at it, and the door, now unsealed for the first time in who knows how long, stood before me. All yours, the locksmith said with a nod before heading out, leaving me alone in the dim hallway. I stood there for a moment, hand on the doorknob, suddenly unsure, but curiosity is a powerful thing, and I couldn't walk away now. With a deep breath, I twisted the knob and pushed the door open. It swung inward with a groan, revealing a small, dusty room. The first thing I noticed was how stale the air was, like the room had been sealed for years without a single breath of fresh air. Dust motes hung in the beam of my flashlight, swirling in the stillness. The room itself was empty, except for a few pieces of old furniture, a wooden chair, a small dresser, and a full-length mirror covered in a sheet. I stepped inside, the floor creaking beneath my weight, and ran my fingers over the surface of the dresser. Thick with dust, untouched for what seemed like decades, the place was barren, neglected, and yet something felt off. I turned my attention to the mirror, hesitating for a moment before pulling the sheet off. The glass was foggy, old, but otherwise just a mirror, nothing unusual. I set the sheet aside and turned back towards the door wondering why anyone had bothered to lock this room so tightly. That's when I noticed it. The wall opposite the door, just above the chair, had something written on it. Faint, 
barely visible in the dim light, but unmistakable. I stepped closer, squinting to make out the faded letters scrawled in a shaky hand. Do not open. The words were scratched into the paint, jagged and uneven, as if someone had written them in a hurry, desperate to leave a message. My stomach twisted. I backed away slowly, the weight of the room settling on me like a heavy blanket. The air felt thicker now, oppressive. I hadn't noticed it before, but there was a coldness in the room, a chill that crept over my skin. I turned to leave, suddenly eager to get out of there, but as I reached the door, something caught my eye. A small, metal object lay on the floor, half buried in the dust. I bent down to pick it up. It was a key. The key that matched the old locks that I had just removed. I stared at it, my mind racing. Why had the key been left inside the room, locked away? And who had written those words on the wall? The feeling of unease grew stronger, and I shoved the key in my pocket, stepping out of the room and pulling the door shut behind me. For the next few days, I tried to forget about the room, but something about it clung to me. No matter how much I told myself it was just an empty space, that the writing on the wall was probably some kind of a joke or the paranoia of a previous owner, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had made a mistake. At night, I started hearing things. It began as faint creaks, almost imperceptible, like the house settling, but they always seemed to come from upstairs, from the direction of the locked room. I told myself it was my imagination that old houses made noises. Still, the sound grew louder as the nights passed. One evening, just as I was drifting off to sleep, I heard it again, sharp, deliberate, creaking footsteps coming from the upstairs hallway. It was unmistakable. I sat up in bed, my heart pounding in my chest. There was no one else in the house. I grabbed my phone, trying to steady my breathing, and slowly made my way towards the staircase. I could hear it more clearly now, slow, deliberate steps, like someone was pacing back and forth in front of the locked door. I paused at the base of the stairs, listening. The footsteps stopped. For a moment, everything was silent, and I considered turning back, going to bed, and pretending I had heard nothing. Then came the sound I had been dreading. The door. It creaked the unmistakable sound of wood groaning as if it had been opened, but I had shut it. I knew I had. Slowly, I crept up the stairs, each step feeling heavier than the last, the air around me thick with dread. At the top of the stairs, the hallway stretched out before me, dimly lit by the single overhead light. The door at the end of the hall, the door I had locked and closed, was now ajar. I stood frozen, my heart racing, my breath shallow. The room was dark, the faintest sliver of blackness visible through the crack in the door. My mind raced. I should leave. I should go back downstairs, call someone, get out of the house. But my legs wouldn't move. Then, from inside the room, I heard it. A soft, wet, dragging sound, like something heavy being pulled across the floor. It was slow, deliberate, the kind of noise that makes your stomach drop, because you know whatever's making it isn't in any hurry. My hands trembled as I reached for the light switch at the end of the hall, flipping it on. The light flickered and buzzed, casting a dim glow on the floor, and that's when I saw it, just at the threshold of the room. A streak of something dark smeared across the floor, something wet, something fresh. The dragging sound stopped. The silence was deafening, pressing in on me from all sides. I stepped closer, my heart thundering in my chest, the walls of the hallway seeming to narrow with every step I took toward the door. I reached it, and with trembling fingers, pushed it open the rest of the way. But the room was empty. But on the floor, just beneath the window, something was smeared in large, jagged letters, not scratched into the wall this time, written. You shouldn't have opened it. My stomach lurched. Then the smell hit me, thick, metallic, like rust and decay. I stumbled back, my foot slipping in something wet, and I fell to the ground. 
I looked down. My hands were covered in it, dark red streaks running across the floor, leading toward the corner of the room, a pool of it glistening in the dim light. And then I saw something move. From the corner, something shifted, a shape, not a person, not an animal, just something, twisted and wrong, like it was trying to drag itself out of the shadows. I couldn't make out the details, just a glimpse of something pale and bloated, covered in dark, matted hair. The dragon sound resumed, louder now, faster, coming straight toward me. I scrambled to my feet, my hands slipping on the blood-streaked floor as I ran for the door. I slammed it shut behind me, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I could hear it on the other side, scraping against the floor, moving towards the door. The handle began to rattle. I bolted down the stairs, not stopping until I was outside, gasping for air in the cold night. The house stood silent, still, like nothing had ever happened. But I knew better. I left that night. I didn't care about the repairs, about the work I had put into the house. I didn't care about selling it. I just needed to get out. I left everything behind, driving as far as I could, until the house was just a memory. But even now, I can't forget. I can still hear it, the slow, wet dragging coming from behind that door. And I know one day, it'll find a way out.